Again, I'm at the end of this long funnel. You know, people who are a little more dedicated, usually executives, attorneys. I mean, I took care of three attorneys this morning. They're more used to research. They don't ever take no for an answer. One of my favorite people is Bill Lear. He, he uh, built the Learjet. And he always used to say, it's not a question of can it be done, it's how much time and money it'll take. And that's how he built the Learjet. People said, you can never build a private jet. And he did it. So in my life, the entire staff here never say no to Dr. Siepser. But we can usually figure out a way to help patients to make them better. When I was talking about my earliest experiences in cataract surgery, I mentioned a Russian immigrant. We removed her cataract. She was very, very nearsighted. And then she could see because we took away that powerful lens that she was, had the negative in the front, the power inside. We took away the power inside. She didn't need the negative out front, right? Makes your eyes a little, those big thick glasses. So some people have a range. Laser vision correction is, takes care of 90% of the people. But, you know, people are short and tall. They're really nearsighted. They're really farsighted. What do we do about those? Well, years ago, I used to just take out their cataract early. That's a big operation. Um, it's subtractive. We're doing something, taking something away. And about now, almost 15 years ago, 18 years ago, something called the intraocular columnar lens came around, star surgical. Well, I wrote a, a book with Tom Mazzocco. Tom Mazzocco invented the taco lens. It was the first lens that you could actually fold and put in through a small opening. Remember the three millimeter license plate? That's what I used. I used to fold this thing and put it in the eye. The Mazako Taco was built by Star Surgical. So I, I'd been to their factory. I, they were the company that finally came along and used some of the same technology to make a lens that you could put additively in an eye. So instead of wearing the thick glasses or a contact lens that was really difficult and thick, we actually put it inside the eye. So I already had a relationship with the company. A fellow, David Delaney, was one of the first investigators here in the United States in Phoenix. I took my whole team. We flew to Phoenix, went and saw him put about 15 of these things in. I said, we're set. Because don't forget where I'm starting. I'm always doing things at the cutting edge, right? So I'm dealing with patients. We have to take out their cataract early. They've been everywhere. Will you help me get out of these glasses? Don't forget, people with thick glasses, like, they are they're a danger. If there's a fire and they can't find their glass, they get up at night, they fall. I mean, it's not without a handicap to have glasses like that. For, in my hands, doing clear lens extraction to get patients to see better, well, that, that was okay. When the columnar lens came around, being a fan of Nikon cameras, right? Remember, Kodak cameras are one lens, right? It gives you a fuzzy picture at every distance. Nikon lenses are focused and they're multiple lenses, compound lenses. Well, when we take out somebody's cataract and we put in a new lens, we're only putting in one lens. When you add a lens, the intraocular columnar lens, intraocular cut, you're making it like a Nikon camera. And what we noted early on is those patients see better than anyone because they have an extra lens, a compound lens that's sort of re-scrambling their images. So the minute that lens came on the market here in the United States, we were on it. And I've done probably about 500 of them. It's pretty rare. You, you want to be minus 8, minus 10, minus 12. The highest I've done is a minus 16. I did one patient with a minus 30. But we had to combine the interocular contact, contact lens with the uh, eczema laser. And it was a pretty interesting patient because they only go to minus 16. So that's a perfect... Um, venue and I, I do them on a regular basis. It's great. You have some 18, 20 year old, a minus 10. They've been told you can't have LASIK. There's nothing that can be done. Most of our problem here, patients always come in and they say, my doctor said nothing can be done. And I always say, no, it's not nothing can be done. There was nothing he could do. We can do that here.